Hey everyone, David Shapiro here with another video. Today we're going to be doing ChatGPT for writing fiction, specifically writing long form fiction like novels. Obviously this is a practice that takes a while, so in this first video I'm hoping to just get to a solid outline and then we'll call it a day. Before we get started though, I wanted to explain that uh, I have monetized some of my YouTube videos. Uh, people are getting a lot of value out of them. Um, and I want to take the ads out, but I was not able to get my uh, Patreon goals met. Um, so my goal is to get to $4,000 a month so that I can uh, pay, all, pay all of my bills, have health insurance, that sort of thing. Um, and then uh, I can permanently demonetize all of my videos. That is my goal. Now, if people would prefer ads, we can do that. I don't really care one way or another, but it would be good if, uh, if, if we can do it this way. All right, so without further ado, let's talk about writing stories. So this is something that I have spent a tremendous amount of time on uh, personally. Um, writing is, uh, is one of my top hobbies, and it's how I met my now fiancé. And so, uh, in fact, uh, one of the things that attracted a lot of people to my channel was using these language models to write fiction. And uh, in point of fact, ChatGPT completely changed some of my plans around my uh, AutoMuse suite of tools. Um, so uh, because of that, like I'm not going to try and compete with Chat ChatGPT. Why, why bother, right? I'm going to do something else. In the meantime, let me show you how to think about this uh, tool so that you can write fiction, long form fiction. Anyone can do it, um, but uh, you got you got you got to know about like writing a story. So. Um, I have the advantage of I had a premise already in mind. So the premise that I had in mind was that I wanted to write a story from the POV of a courtesan during the golden age of Rome. Um, and I wanted it to be like a palace intrigue kind of story. Um, but also the golden age of Rome or the, the, the height of the Roman power. Um, there's a huge amount of stories that can be told in that. You know, there's... Um, uh, there's, you know, whether it's Augustus or Caesar in Gaul or whatever is going on in Egypt or, you know, the revolt of the Jews or whatever. There's all kinds of cool stuff. So um, the way that I like to start these kinds of conversations is you just tell it what you're doing. So you say, hey, um, I'm writing a novel. Um, I need your help. I found that if you're polite, it like it, 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 it copies your tone. So if you just if you're very thorough and polite, you, it tends to be more helpful. Um, if you just give it like flat instructions, it's usually uh, willing to help as well. But I mean, there's no nothing wrong with being polite to the machine. Um, it also feels good to be polite. Um, I'm writing a novel and I need your help. Um, this is a uh, palace intrigue slash uh, historical fiction slash adventure uh, set during uh, the golden age of the Roman Empire. It follows um, uh, a courtesan. Um, so help me brainstorm this story. The goal today is to get a very solid outline. So if you tell it what your goal is, um, it's like, sure, let's do that. Um, what questions do you have? So if you if you tell it if you if you finalize it with saying that ask me questions. It, this is where the power of a dialogue comes in because you might be making assumptions in your mind that are not going to translate. Um, so let's see. It says, sure, I'm happy to help brainstorm ideas for your novel to get started. Can you give me some more information about the courtesan, courtesan and her role in the story? What is her goal or motivation? Do you have any specific historical events or figures that you would like to incorporate? These are phenomenal questions. Okay. Um Great questions. And I'm saying this as a, I'm not a, a I guess I am a semi-pro writer. I have made some money from writing fiction. Um, but uh, I'm also just a very passionate writer and I, uh, a good chunk, like more than half of my friends are writers. That's like my social life. Um, <clears throat> the other half is all AI people. <laughs> um, okay, great questions. So, um, well, I really wanted to have a close, visceral experience of um, the Roman world uh, during its height. Um, for instance, I really love the intrigue of 
Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Um, I also really loved the book Cushiel's Dart. And if you know what Cushiel's Dart is, you know that it's a very spicy story. We're not going to go that spicy. At least, well, the chat GPT will get mad at me if I try and go that spicy. We're not going to, we're going to toe the line. But we're, mm, no, I'm not going to get demonetized over that. Um, so we'll just leave it at that. Um, so that's the kind of story I want to tell. Um, I'll need help uh, fleshing out um, the characters. So for, for some reference, the reason that I have some of this knowledge already is because I was using my own tools, AutoMuse tools, while I was brainstorming this. Um, those are still being built, but they've been kind of put on the back burner. We'll get to that later, but the tools are coming. Um, I'll need help fleshing out the characters, um, backstories, motivations, goals. Um, now, in terms of um, uh, historical events or characters, I was thinking maybe um, Augustus um, or Hadrian um, or some of the uh, five good emperors. Uh, basically, I want a setting that is um, that allows for anything to go. Um, celebrations, opulence, battles, piracy, uh, etc. Make sense? All right, so let's see what ChatGPT says. Yes, I understand what you're looking for. It sounds like you want to create a sweeping epic story set during the height of the Roman Empire with a courtesan as the main character. To help flesh out the story and characters, we could start by brainstorming some ideas for the courtesan's background and motivations. For example, what was her life like before she became a courtesan? What led her to that profession and what are her goals within it? Does she have any personal or professional relationships? Um, let's see, in terms of historical events... The reigns of Augustus and Hadrian would provide a rich backdrop, as they were both significant figures, and the rule coincided with a time of prosperity and expansion. Including events um, could add to the uh, historical reality. Okay, cool. Is there anything specific you would like to include? Um, okay, great. So, um, first, let's brainstorm the MC. Uh, MC is shorthand for main character. Um, uh, during another brainstorming session, one idea was that she was a slave seeking liberation, uh, but I'm not sure if that works. Um, another idea was that she was from um, a lower family. Um, maybe, uh, I guess, maybe a patrician, um, maybe a poor patrician family. I uh, don't remember if the patricians were still around. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, maybe let's brainstorm some around that. Can you uh, give me some more ideas? So one thing with chat GPT is you have to be very specific about what you ask for. Um, Whereas interacting with a human, um, there's a lot of, uh, based on my recent interview with Anna Bernstein, um, <laughs> which she pointed out that like with a human, there's, there's an implied intent. Um, with, with the machine, you have to be very explicit. Um, okay, perhaps she was born into a poor patrician family and was struggling to make ends meet. She was forced to leave home at a young age, make her way in the world. She may have turned to courtesan work um, to earn a living. Um, and her goal may be uh, beauty, charm, gain powerful, uh, gain the favor of powerful men and women. Uh, alternatively, she should have grown up. She could have grown up in a wealthy family, but fallen on hard times due to financial mismanagement, political scheming. Ooh, that's good. That's some good intrigue. Oh yeah, I like that. And so here's where, like, just asking it to give me ideas, and then I pay attention to what resonates with me, and so then it follows my lead. Um, another possibility was orphaned and had to make her way on the streets. That's not quite as interesting, um, you know, like a rags to riches thing. But since I want to do a palace intrigue, this, this middle one looks good. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I like that middle one, um, of somewhat fallen fortunes. 
that's very consistent with um, palace intrigue uh, and also sets her up with a strong motivation for revenge and justice and getting back to her um, uh, what's the word uh, desire not desired um, deserved station um, okay so that's a powerful through line let's now think about the theme um, of this story the universal truth can you help me workshop that now Um, so I want to pause and, and point out that like, okay, how do, how, do, how do you as the person following along know what to do? So I am following uh, kind of my personal pattern of when I'm coming up with a new story. So you start with a premise. So premise is usually just the setting and the main character. Um, that's like, oh, I've got this great idea for a story. So setting and main character. Then you develop that main character and explore their interaction with the setting because there's three pillars of writing fiction, and that is plot, setting, and character. We'll get the plot in a little while. Hopefully that's where we'll end today. But setting and character, so character is the human, um, and then the setting is the world that they're in, and um, they're, those are intrinsically intertwined. Um, and then the, the thing that guides the whole story, the purpose of the story, is like the beacon on the hill or the lighthouse that you're heading towards, that is theme. And so theme is the universal truth, the universal um, lesson that is in it. And so in uh, popular fiction lately, um, you might have remembered this. Uh, it was vaguely popular uh, movie called Avengers Endgame, where this uh, big purple dude named Thanos uh, wants to erase half of life uh, in the universe. So the theme there is the arbitrariness of catastrophe right? Storms will just kill at random. Plagues will kill at random. Volcanoes will kill at random. Thanos represents that, uh, the cataclysm, right? He is the death blight of, of, um, of just our, our existence. Um, and so let's see what it says. So, cause we have to figure out the theme. Um, like, why is it that I wanted to set this at the golden age of Rome and of these somewhat fallen fortunes? So let's see if we can figure out, let's see if we can pull a theme out that is going to be the guiding force or the guiding energy of this story. Um, okay, so to identify the theme, it might be helpful to think about the central message or lesson you want your readers to take. Well, duh, that's what I'm asking. Um, what is the main character struggling with and how does she overcome? What does the main character learn about herself in the world uh, as the story progresses? What is the story saying about human nature or the human condition? Um, answering these questions can help you identify the underlying ideas or principles. Okay, sure. For example, the main character is struggling with the challenges of living in a rigid hierarchical society. Oh, here we go. We're getting into the good stuff here. Ultimately, find uh, able to find her place in it. The theme of the story might be something like finding one owns, one's own path in life or the power of self-determination. On the other hand, if the main character is struggling with issues of identity or belonging, um, the theme might be something like the search for one's true self or the importance of community. Okay, so what this is, what, what this is implying here is that um, a, a character's arc, their personal journey, is, is what exemplifies and carries the theme. And so you can, look, you can often look at theme as, uh, this is not always true, um, but one of the easiest ways to do theme is what is it that they learn? What is it that they overcome along the way? Now, you can have a theme that does not directly um, impact a character's arc and that, and that the theme is actually in the setting. So a good example of that is that one of the, one of the, the overarching themes in The Witcher, um, the Netflix show, is one of nihilism, and that is that everything is pointless. And this is, and that is put in the uh, the world, the setting, that where the setting punishes people for having hope, because that is the opposite of of nihilism, right? Um, and so Geralt then is a reflection of the the world that he lives in, but he kind of has a flat character arc because he's just, I know what the world is like, and it's an awful place, and I'm not going to fight it. Um, but his personal truth is that you can't fight destiny. Um, so that's you can have multiple themes. Okay, great. Um, so it did. It, it, it's it's framing it. We're we're getting there. But let's let's do this a little bit more. 
Um, cause it, 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 one of the things that I don't like about chat GPT is that sometimes it'll just kind of tell you how to approach a problem rather than solving the problem. Now this is okay because sometimes just knowing what to do is, is important. But um, sometimes I'm just like, no, just solve the problem for me. Um, so I'll say, let's think through this. Um, let's think through this. Um, uh, let's see. The setting is the, um, is the apogee of the Roman Empire. What does that tell people? There's an abundance of wealth and power and possibility. Um, so that feels important. And then um, the MC uh, has lost her station, but wants it back. Um, so again, what does this um, say about um, humanity or uh, universal truths? Um, can you help me articulate this theme? Let's see what it says. The setting of your story during the height of the Roman Empire suggests a time of great prosperity and opportunity, but also a time of strict social hierarchy and rigid rules of behavior. This could be seen as a metaphor for the larger human experience where opportunities and limitations are often determined by factors such as birth, wealth, and status and gender. Um, the, the main character's struggle to regain her former status and place in society could be seen as a reflection of the human desire for recognition and respect. Ooh, okay. And the lengths that people will go to in order to achieve their goals. This could be lead to a theme of the pursuit of power and success or the cost of ambition. Alternatively, the main character's journey could be seen as a commentary on the capriciousness of fate. Ouch. Um, so capriciousness is um, mercurial emotions. <laughs> That's what capricious means, is when, when um, something is very fickle. Um, so the capriciousness of fate and the dangers of relying on external factors for one's sense of worth and identity. In this case, the theme could be something like the fragility of success or the importance of self-acceptance. I hope these ideas give you inspiration. So this is actually zeroing in on what we had worked on before, before ChatGBT. Um, so let's do both, actually. Let's have her pursue power um, and status, and then um, when she gets it, she realizes that she's alone, hunted, and, uh, and empty. Um, so then uh, she must make a choice um, to let it all go and um, pursue a genuine human connection. I think this will parallel um, today's zeitgeist of uh, quiet quitting and um, and reclaiming our lives. Um, what do you think? <clears throat> okay, it says, I think that could be a powerful and resonant theme for your story, having the main character initially pursue power and status only to eventually realize the emptiness and isolation that comes with it. Could be a compelling arc that reflects the idea of the cost of ambition. Um, this could be a great way to explore the theme of the importance of genuine human connection um, and the dangers of relying on external markers success for one's sense of worth and fulfillment. To further develop, oh, now it's suggesting stuff. To further develop this theme, you might consider exploring the main character's journey from striving for external validation to finding a sense of purpose and meaning within herself. This could involve showing her struggles with feelings of inadequacy or loneliness, as well as moments of self-discovery and connection that help her to see the value of her own worth and relationships. Yes, this is great. I think we need to uh, break this into a duology. Uh, the first book will be called Ascension or something uh, grandiose like that. And the second book could be called um, Descent or something. Um, and so I really like this and I'm totally going to finish this. And you guys are going to go on this journey with me as however long it takes. <laughs> Um, cause this is a story I've wanted to write for a while, but it's like, I don't even know where to begin. 
um, because uh, it's also because it's a historical fiction. There's a lot of research that you need to do in order to keep it accurate. Um, so, like, you know, we haven't even explored dates and times of, like, you know, uh, Augustus or Marcus Aurelius or Hadrian. Um, so we'll figure that out in a minute because we, we do have to flesh out the setting. Um, okay, that's all nice and solid. Now um, let's, uh, uh, let's summarize everything we've got up to this point. Please write a detailed... Uh, summary of the story so far. So you want to do this every now and then because especially when you're doing long form fiction, um, it it does chat GPT does have a limited memory. So you want to you want to kind of like, okay, let's stop, let's circle the wagons, let's figure out exactly what's going on. And see it got one thing wrong where it's um it says poor patrician family. Um so we actually want to say that she started as a with a as a in a powerful family. Um, through her beauty, charm, and wit, the main character is able to gain the favor of powerful men and women, and she rises to position of influence. However, as she becomes more successful, she becomes to, she begins to realize the emptiness and isolation. Um, yep, she must ultimately make a choice between her ambition and genuine human connection. Um, the first book, titled Ascension, follows the character's rise to power. Um, the second book, Descent, explores her journey from striving for external validation to finding a sense of purpose and meaning with herself as she grapples with the choices she has made and the consequences from them. Excellent. Um, we just need to change one detail. Um, she starts, um, or she was born to a powerful, and so this is where I thought something and said something but didn't tell it. Um, she was born to a powerful and wealthy family, uh, but uh, her family was um, dispossessed uh, due to uh, betrayal and palace intrigue. Can you update the summary based on this info? <laughs> Excuse me. Um, certainly, here's an updated summary. And so by getting it to restate it, we can then see how the machine understands the story. And this is the same thing as, as we, what we do with humans, um, which, which is called reflective listening. So um, I am asking it to reflect back to me what it understands that I want. So using reflective listening with ChatGPT is a really powerful technique. I'm gonna do a quick time check because, um, oh wow, we're already 22 minutes in. Um, I wanna keep these videos reasonable. Um, so we're, we're, we, we've got like the main through line, we've got a little bit of the setting. Um, so let's try and get a little bit further with the setting and then let's start trying to outline a plot. Um, great. Let's flesh out the setting now. Um, can you help me figure out when exactly to set this story? When do you think, um, the Roman empire hit its absolute peak. Trajan, okay. Trajan was an effective ruler uh, and popular ruler. He ruled for all, almost 20 years. Okay, so that's a, that's a good period of time. Um, so Augustus was earlier. Um, Hadrian came after. Oh, let's do, Hadri let's do Trajan to Hadrian. Um, so her life takes place during the entirety of um, of these guys. Okay, great. Um, uh, let's set this so that, uh, her birth coincides with the, um, ascension of Trajan. Um, so, uh, so she's partly, uh, marked. The Romans were very superstitious. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> as being tied to the fate of the emperor. Um, so then, <clears throat> so then her life, uh, goes, um, uh, so then her, her character arc follows Rome through its absolute, uh, peak and the beginning 
of the decline. Um, so her uh, choices mirror that of Rome. Okay, with this in mind, um, can you list all the major events um, and people and, uh, well, I get, yeah, events and people that we sh should think about from, uh, let's see, 98 AD to 138 AD. Um, this will help us figure out plot uh, beats later. Okay. Certainly, here are some of the major events and people from the period of 98 AD to 30, 138 AD. Um, so this is her 40 year life, basically. Um, and then we can have, cause you know, uh, during Roman times, Roman matrons tended to live a lot longer than Roman men, um, mostly due to, uh, conflict, but not always, uh, cause you also had much shorter life expectancies of, of women in general due to, um, death during childbirth. Um, but once a woman made it past childbearing years, she was their life expectancy was pretty similar to that of today with the exception of like things like plagues happening. Um, okay. Antonine wall, the Bar Kobo revolt, the Jewish rebellion. Ah, yeah, there's that one take takes place in Palestine. Um, cause one of the things that I thought of is if she's a, if she's a courtesan, then maybe she's attached to very powerful people and goes all over the Roman world, which could be really interesting. Um, yep. Okay. So this is, this is, the, the Roman Parthian Wars, so that's way out east, um, which is not yet now Iran. So they were there's lots of uh, horses and stuff. So because Cushiel's legacy is one of my favorite stories, I'm thinking about like what if she goes on these adventures to like save the empire or something, um, and and this is how she gets powerful, um, and then she starts touring with with Hadrian or something. Um, I really like this actually. Um, okay, so. So these are just a few examples. Um, let's focus on her earlier life for a minute. Um, she would have been about 12 during 110, whoops, 110 AD. Um, what happened around then? Um, anything political or economic that we can base the fall of her family on. Okay, so it says like, I don't know what's happening in your character's life. Um, okay, so it's confused. I'm, I'm actually asking for um, real, real events. So I'm gonna do a quick refresh. This is a trick that I have. You can interrupt it with a, with a solid refresh. And then, um, and then you can go and regenerate it. And I'm like, no, 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 let's not do that. Um, okay, what was happening in Rome around 110 AD? Um, I am mostly curious about political and economic events um, in and around the imperial city. So uh, OpenAI, if you're watching, please add a cancel button because you you don't want the conversation to be polluted. In fact, if we could go back and delete the bad messages um, and, and clean it up as we go, so if we can flag something to say, remove this from the conversation, that would be fantastic. Okay, during the period around one uh, was enjoying a time of relative peace and prosperity. Trajan was an effective and popular ruler. There was likely a great deal of uh, political and economical activity. Um, let's see, many public works. Okay, the expansion of the city's aqueduct system. Um, oh, okay, sure, let's go with that. Sure, let's go with that. Um, let's say the MC's um, family was involved in um, these major works. They were sponsoring and um, and organizing um, big projects, but uh, wealthier, um, wealthier or more well-connected family wanted in because they were very, um, were very lucrative 
and high, highly coveted projects. Um, so let's imagine that um, her family's fall from grace was um, was part of that scheme. Um, Let's go ahead and name these families and people. Can you recommend some uh, clan names and uh, given names for our characters? Um, we need at least the MC, her family name, um, and then the rival faction name. Certainly, here are a few suggestions for clan names and given names you might use. Clan names Claudius. This was a common clan name in ancient Rome, and it was associated with several influential families. Flavius. This was another one. Um, Aurelius. Um, so the Claudians and the Flavians, these are... Uh, <laughs> I don't want to be necessarily that on the nose. Um, and I'm not going to name her, her Marcus. Um, we, need, we need a female's name. But uh, Valerius or Aurelius, or, I mean, yeah, these are, these are good. Um, do, 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 okay. What about, uh, women's, women's names? Remember the, um, the MC is a courtesan. Um, so one thing that I, that I noticed is that you have to sometimes remind chat GPT, cause it's like, it'll kind of start going down its own rabbit hole and you have to pull it back and say, no, this is what we're doing. Um, let's, uh, let's get some women's names. <clears throat> Julia. So my fiance pointed out that, um, one thing that a, a lot of Roman homes did was that they just gave the women the feminized version. So you see Julia, Flavia, Aurelia, um, so they were very super uncreative when it came to uh, women's names. Um, do, 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 do. So we could do something like Aurelia Aurelius or Aurelia Flavius. I don't know. Um, uh, let's see. So uh, female names were often um, just feminine uh, versions of house names. Are there any other kinds of names we can choose? Something more distinctive, maybe? Okay, it says yes, blah, blah, blah. Now, this is something that I happen to know already. So if you didn't know this, you could have asked that question, like, why are, why are the names weird? Um, let's see, Simprio Sempronia. This was an uncommon given name um, associated with uh, Sister of Cato the Younger. Interesting. Tertullo, Cytheris, uh, or Cytheris. I don't know if that would be Cytheris or Cytheris. Um, I want something that's not too difficult to say. So Cornelia, mother of the Gracchi brothers. So let's say like Cornelia Flavius or something, or Valerius. Cornelia Valerius. Um, would Cornelia Valerius be a legit name? Anything wrong with that? Father or husband? Okay. In the genitive case, uh, it would be, uh, Valerii. So I guess her name would be Cornelia Valeriae or Cornelia of the Valeriae. Okay, blah, blah, blah. So it's telling me what's wrong with it. Um, for example, it's common for Roman names to be comprised of a given name, a clan name, and sometimes a cognomen, a nickname or additional surname. That's right. Um, um, so with the given name coming first, followed by the clan name, followed by the cognomen. Good. So I didn't even have to ask. It, it realized that I was struggling. Um, okay. Help me understand um, what the genitive 
genitive case means. Um, the leery eye looks plural. I'm lost. <laughs> In Latin, the genitive case is used to indicate possession or ownership. In English, we use uh, the possessive form of a noun. Um, genitive case is often indicated by it. So it knows a lot about Latin. Um, I've seen a lot of people, so while it's writing, I've seen a lot of people talking about how um, large language models don't have uh, mental models of the world. Um, and I completely disagree. This is explaining Latin to me. And it not only that, it intuited that I needed to learn Latin. So please explain to me how it's doing this um, without internal models. You can't. <laughs> Trust me, I have a bookcase full of neuroscience over there. <laughs> okay, um, let me do a quick time check. We are at 35 minutes. We'll try and wrap this up pretty quick. Um, okay, great. Please summarize everything up to this point. Um, uh, everything, let's say, uh, everything about the story up to this point. Um, you can ignore the sidebar conversations. Um, let's go ahead and, um, so for example, um, the so geniform is, is for first, first and second declension nouns like Valerius. I don't even, um, I'm not going to learn that much about Latin right now, but I guess I'm going to. Um, okay, here, it finally explained it. Cornelia Valeriae. Um, so Cornelia belonging to the Vir v Valerius clan. Got it. Let's go with this uh, for now. Um, Cornelia uh, Valeriae um, uh, will figure out her cognomen later. Um yeah. Please go ahead and summarize our story. The story is set during the height of the Roman Empire, a time of great prosperity and opportunity, but also a time of strict social hierarchy and rigid rules of behavior. The main character is Cornelia, Cornelia Valeriae, a courtesan who was born into the uh, powerful and wealthy patrician family, but has fallen on hard times due, due to betrayal and palace intrigue. Determined to regain her family's former status um, and protect them from further harm, she uh, turns to uh, courtesan work as a way to earn her living and support herself. She climbs a social ladder through her beauty, charm, and wit. She's able to um, blah, blah, blah. She ultimately must make a choice. It takes place during the uh, Ro uh, Roman Emperor, Emperor Trajan. She navigates the complex world. Okay, um, this is great. Please add the details we discussed about the fall of her family, specifically that um, specifically they were um, participating in the um, grand public works, such as the aqueducts, um, and that uh, the trail um, was over that. Please incorporate that into your summary and add the date as well. 110 AD when Cornelia was 12. Um, so again, by asking it to restate things, it kind of says, okay, the document is written here. Um, and it's, I confused it again um, by, because it says, oh, it's, it's set in, in 110 AD. Um, uh, let's see. And, um, the story is set um, a few years later as she comes into adulthood. Um, here's an updated summary of the story. The story is set in 11080. Okay, whatever. I'm not going to fight it. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I mean is like, okay, I could probably reword this, but like this is good enough. Um, There we go. Yep, there we go. Okay. I really like this as a as a backstory because it gives her a very, very complex set of motivations and um, let's say baggage to work through. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think we'll call this a day. I'm super pleased with this. 
Um, and we will, uh, we will be back because I love doing this. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. So thanks for watching.